and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm doing a remake of my Clear Up Exfoliating Facial Bars. Um, and I put a whole host of really special ingredients in this with uh, people that struggle with breakouts or problem skin is what I'm thinking of and not just for your face, it's for your body. I mean, when I was a teen, I would break up on my chest and break out on my back and um, my teenagers when they were going through puberty. I mean, we just were not blessed with clear skin in our family. Um, so the ingredients that I chose to go in this bar are with people that are struggling with uh, breakouts. And this is what I have in mind today. Um, with all this being said, I'm going to tell you why I chose these ingredients, but this is a bar of soap and it will lather and it will clean you up. This is going to be an all natural bar. I'm going to be using the essential oils of tea tree, rosemary and oregano and uh, they have wonderful properties. So let me just tell you a few little bullet points I wrote down and I don't have my reading glasses on so <laughs> I may be squinting but let's see. Um, rosemary is an antifungal, antiseptic, it's um, antibacterial, it's good for troubled skin so that's rosemary, just a couple of the things, there's more but uh, tea tree has wound healing benefits, it's antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antiviral and it uh, fights acne. Uh, oregano is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and it's known to heal wounds. So those are some of the things that I pulled off the internet of um, properties in those essential oils. Um, let me tell you some of the ingredients. I'm going to be doing activated charcoal, fuller's earth clay, and turmeric. And here's some of the reasons why I chose that. A uh, turmeric here, I have this organic turmeric powder. It's a beautiful color and it's good for your skin. Uh, it's rich in antioxidants. It's also anti-inflammatory. It's wound healing. Uh, it can reduce scarring. It can fight eczema and psoriasis. So these are good things topically. Turmeric is great to eat too, but um, activated charcoal is really good for your skin. Uh, it says that it helps with oily skin um, and it can have a tightening and a firming, like a pore reducing effect on your skin topically. Um, and what else? Fuller's Earth Clay, let's see, is an oil absorber. It absorbs impurity, it unclogs pores, and it's a gentle exfoliant. So that's why I put the Fuller's Earth in here. So but I've tweaked my recipe and added jojoba oil. And again, it's an anti-inflammatory oil. It reduces redness. It is full of vitamins E and B complex, which uh, says that it helps repair damaged skin. So um, I'm going to replace some of the sweet almond oil that I normally use with jojoba oil, which will just kick this facial bar right up over the top. And I'm saying facial bar again, but I mean anywhere you have problem skin bar. Okay, so for the liquid portion, I'm going to be doing a combination of aloe vera juice and witch hazel. And I'll show you how I do the witch hazel. This is a remake. I also have an earlier video where I did this. Um, you do need to be careful because witch hazel has some alcohol in it. So um, it's, I'm going to use it cold. It'll be in the fridge. It'll be cold. I'll have it in an ice bath. And if you just go really slowly, you're not going to volcano. And I'll show you how I do it. But um, just be careful. There's a word to the wise working with witch hazel, but it can be done. Those are just some of the cast of characters that we're going to pull together for this wonderful bar of soap. And again, all this being said, it's a bar of soap. It'll make you clean. So <laughs> I'm going to get everything pulled together and uh, let's make some soap. All right, so let me tell you what I've got going on in my little ice bath here. Um, and this is very cold water. I had another thing of lime water in here so um, the ice cubes have melted but it's very cold. I have my witch hazel and aloe vera liquid in here and I'm just dissolving some cane sugar in here right now that helps with the lathering and the bubbling of the soap. I've been adding it in my soaps lately and thank you so much. So many people gave me tips on how to add sugar and you add it into your liquid before you add the lye. And I did learn that the hard way. Um, it will dissolve in the liquid portion, but once you add the lye, it doesn't dissolve. It's it just the chemicals, it just doesn't work. But once you get it all dissolved and smooth like this, you're good to go. So I'm gonna add my silk fibers on top here. I'm just gonna pull off a little cotton ball size. So there's a little, and throw it in there. I don't even need to cut it up because this is gonna get real hot. And I'm gonna get my gloves on. And we'll go ahead and add our lye over the witch hazel and aloe vera. And this is about, I'd say one third witch hazel to two thirds aloe vera is what I've got going in here. 
Um, and so I'm just going to add my lye real slow and keep stirring and it'll get real hot but that's okay it won't volcano up because and also uh, the witch hazel was refrigerated overnight so it was very cold when I started this whole thing um, so you can't really see in there sorry but uh, the silk hasn't dissolved yet so you can still see the silk right there um, so just keep adding a little at a time and the nice thing about the ice bath is even if this did volcano and spill over, it's in a container. So, um, you know, I would lose the amount, but it wouldn't, it's not dangerous. It wouldn't make a mess. It's not going to like volcano all over the table and get on me or anything. So um, I do like ice baths for that reason also. Everything's contained, <laughs> so it's very safe. But yeah, see, it's not even, I mean, it's hot, but it's not volcanoing up or bubbling or anything. So, and that's just because of the alcohols in the witch hazel. Um, that you have to be careful. It's like that if you're working with beer or wine soap. Um, with beer and wine, I actually boil it first to get the alcohol dissipated off before I make soap with it. But I didn't want to do that with the witch hazel because I really wanted all the astringent properties in there. So I've got all the lye in and there it is. And the silk is melted. So I'm just gonna let this continue to cool off and get my oils prepped and we'll move forward. So here are my oils for my clear up facial bars um, with the jojoba oil is in here also along with my butters and all the good stuff. So I'm gonna add, um, instead, oops, I grabbed the wrong container. I normally put kale and clay in here and I'm not gonna use kale and I'm gonna do Fuller's Earth. And that's what I meant to grab, my colloidal oats. So let me get my oats in here. And here's my Fuller's Earth Clay. I'm going to put that in here instead because I want that in everything. A nice rounded tablespoon. I'll do two tablespoons. There. And I forgot to mention I will be putting apricot kernel meal in here. And it's, it's a small, um, here I'll hold it up. It's a good exfoliant. It's really nice and scrubby, but it's not too scrubby. It's not sharp. It's a very fine grind on this, so it's not gonna be really aggressive on your skin, but it is gonna give a really nice exfoliating factor. And I got this from Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, I just really like the grind on that. So, and I want that in everything. So that's in here. So let me get these dry additives blended in, and then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, I've got them all blended in. It's a, it's a darkish color, but that'll lighten up after um, saponification. That's the Fuller's Earth Clay that's making this sort of olivey tone. So in here is our witch hazel, aloe vera, cane sugar, a toss of silk, and sodium lactate. <laughs> got a lot packed in this little jar. So I'm gonna just add this in and um, pulse it with the blender until I get emulsion, and then we'll split up. I think though, um, because I have three colors. I will hand stir in the, the essential oils after I get emulsion here. So that's first. So again, just pulsing and stirring. And there we go. Pretty quick. So now um, I think I will go ahead and hand stir in my essential oils. It's the oregano, the rosemary, and the tea tree. Um, and they do speed trace. So I'm just going to hand stir those in, but I just want to make sure everything has an equal part. And since I'm splitting off for three different colors, I just wanted to make sure I was good. So this big one here is going to be for my activated charcoal. And this one will be my turmeric. And then we'll leave this big one uncolored and it's already starting to thicken up. So we're just gonna get moving here and I'm gonna do an in the pot swirl. There. Okay. Yep, we're already thickening up here so. We're just gonna have to move, move, move with this. That oregano, it'll get you every time. Let's see how we do. 
It's so worth it though. If you can get it to go, it is so worth it. All right, let me get a spatula. Here we go. Pull this out. Pretty thick, but I think we can get this down in the mold if I keep it going. So I'm going to just plop and plop. Go around. Ooh, that charcoal has got me. Plop and plop. Oh my word. Hope I can get this in the mold. There we go. Let's get our mold over here. I'm going to flip this a couple times chop it around. I just want to break up that charcoal. All right, it kind of looks like a mess right now, but I'm really hoping that I can get it sort of so it doesn't look quite so bloppy. Ooh. Well, this is interesting, huh? You win some, you lose some. But you know what? It's so worth it. We're going to pretty this up on top, and um, these bars are going to be just so, so many good ingredients in there. All right, well, what do you do when the top goes sideways? I'm going to add salt all over the top just to sort of pretty it up like a little lipstick on a pig here. But the salt's great for your skin, too. And I'll just pat this in, and uh, we'll pretend like it looks cute on top because it's going to be worth it. <laughs> Keep telling myself that, but it will be. All right, I'm just going to give this a gentle pat so that hopefully it'll adhere. So it's been about 24 hours. <laughs> oh my word. It was the oregano oil, essential oil. This thing went all kinds of crazy fast on us, but um, the top, you know what? That's pretty crazy, hideous. Let's get in here and see what these look like on the inside, because I have a feeling they're gonna be really cool on the inside, and once we get them cut into bars, um, it's gonna be really good soap. And aesthetically, not great. Ingredients-wise, great so man I'm hoping really having my hopes up in here and seeing if we got something good no idea look at this pink seepage what in the world is that all about look at that this is crazy I have no idea what went pink in there that's bizarre. Well, let's get it cut. All right, that's kind of groovy looking on the inside, but man, these were a challenge. in and see how these swirls came out if you can even call them swirls it was just sort of a choppy hot mess in there wow that's rustic all right this is uh probably the ugliest soap I have ever made. And I have air pockets, so I'll have to fill those in when I do the shavings. But yeah, these are, maybe they look like marble or granite. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these are pretty ugly. Still be good soap, not pretty to look at. Wow. <laughs> oh, these are really, yeah. Interesting. Hey, you win some, you lose some. Now, even though these are what I would consider pretty atrocious looking, it's still good soap. 
going to let this cure. It's going to be fantastic. Um, just not very pretty. So the mystery is solved for these pink dots. When I went to do my dishes, I noticed the silicone liner. I obviously didn't wipe it out and it had some leftover mica from the last batch because I just couldn't figure out. I'm like, what in the world is going on? So this is mica from another batch, which I can just wash off with a little damp rag. So anyway, I have, um, because it was so thick going in the mold, I have some holes and I'll show you how I fill them up. So what I do is I take my shavings from the sides. I do this to all my bars to clean them up before I stamp. And because this is the next day, these are still a little bit pliable. And I just make like a little soap dough out of them. This is a little waxy because it was very firm, but if you work it, it'll get pliable. There. And then I just fill in the hole and wipe off the excess. And it's filled in. And now there's one right there. So for little ones, you can kind of make a little pointy plug and get it in there. And it's filled in. And it's aesthetically pretty, uh, pretty er. These are kind of rustic looking. Um, these are not my most attractive bars, but I think having the holes filled in is nice. So I will go ahead with any of the other holes and just do that on them. So that's how I do it.